reflections the morning after on the president's big speech. How it flew. And how it landed. We cross the river from the Capitol Hill venue to Gravelly Point. They spot planes here. How did they view the speech? I thought he did a good job. I think he did what he needed to do. Um, I think he needed to come out with some fire in his belly and stand up to the doubters. I figure when he gives a somewhat coherent speech that he's either reading off the teleprompter or listening in his ear, uh, if you ask him questions, it, like sort of impromptu in a, a press conference or something, I mean, he can't string two words together. I'm not the biggest fan of Joe Biden. As a Democrat and progressive, I think there's a lot he still has to do to earn my vote, particularly when it comes to the Middle East and um, the situation in Gaza. But I think he put a lot of concerns to rest last night. I was really impressed. Um, I know he's the president, but last night was the first time that I really felt him presidential. The night before had seen protest outside the Capitol building prior to the State of the Union address. Inside, it was billed as make or break. I know it may not look like it, but I've been around a while. For a president facing questions over his age and mental sharpness. We have to stand up to Putin. I know you know how to read. My God, what freedom else would you take away? We stopped you 50 times before and we'll stop you again. Democrats holding their breath breathed a little easier. He was strong, he was forceful, he was clever. Doug Thornell is a party strategist. You know, we don't have prime minister's questions like uh, the UK does, but this was the closest thing I've seen to that in a while, and he excelled at it. Biden's opponents criticized him, claiming he'd used the forum for a campaign speech. It won't worry Biden supporters. His is a campaign too often with a message undermined by the messenger. James Matthews, Sky News, in Gravelly Point.